Good evening and welcome to the Kuhn Academy 2016 edition for this installment of AP US History where we're not just learning history, we're making history. Okay, we're going to uh, wrap up our colonial unit with the Enlightenment, which uh, Katy Perry gave us a little introduction to here. Um, a little bit on the Enlightenment and then the Great Awakening, which kind of occur simultaneously, so good contextualization, but... Um, have very different uh, goals and objectives, okay? Uh, now, one uh, thing to kind of con conclude our discussion of religion that we've hit on this uh, this ter um, term is uh, something called deism. It's a term you want to be familiar with and uh, might even look good on the word wall. Hint, hint, five points for note cards on Friday. Um, but deism is this belief that um, reason and observation of the natural world, so what we see, are sufficient to determine the existence of a god. All right? In fact, the sun comes up and that there's the sky and the weather changes and all these just natural things that we see in the world show us that there's a god that exists. However, okay, um, we um, what once we're here, it's kind of up to us what happens. Okay, So there's not this idea that we're predetermined or predestination or anything like that or God has a plan for us or we have to prove our good deeds or anything like that, but you're free to make your decisions while you're here, and then you answer to him, you know, in, in the next world. So it's kind of a less less of a fearing God than uh, than we had previously seen uh, with the Puritans and Calvinists uh, and things like that, okay? Uh, and you'll see, obviously, Thomas Jefferson's picture, along with many other founding fathers, were deists. So they believed in the God, but they also believed that, you know, reason and thought are kind of what prevailed down here on Earth, okay? Now, in Europe... The Enlightenment had been taking shape for, for, you know, the last 100, 200 years or so, but it's kind of trickles its way to America uh, with some no notable writings and uh, philosophers and things like that. Uh, but it started to become prominent throughout the American colonies, and it started to apply scientific principles to politics and religion. So where we had traditionally thought that the kings were, you know, divinely chosen by God to be our leaders, now we're starting to realize, okay, people have some control of, over themselves and, and that, that uh, people make these decisions. It's not God that determines our leaders. And, you know, deism is kind of that scientific uh, application of religion as well, kind of going more with natural law and things that way. So if you think of it this way, that in the Enlightenment, people could comprehend material for themselves and then mold it and shape it for their betterment, all right, and, and can improve society that way, politically and religiously. All right. Some of the more notable ones were Ben Franklin and Thomas Jefferson, and it's not a coincidence. They're also going to be leading our American Revolution uh, in a few years. Okay. Now, as a counter to that is the Great Awakening. All right. So you have the Enlightenment going on in Europe and in America that's kind of de-emphasizing religion and starting to put more emphasis in human reason and human thought. But the Great Awakening is uh, Jonathan Edwards' response to, to this lack of, of God and lack of faith is starting to take off throughout the colonies. You know, we've seen the halfway covenant sort of show the weakness of the Puritan church or the declining influence of the Puritan church. So we give a very notable uh, sermon called Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. It's probably the most famous speech in colonial times. We'll hopefully read it in class on Thursday. All right? uh, this is just a quick video on uh, his speech. It's not the speech itself, but it's just a little video and overview of it. So uh, let's take a watch, look at this while we uh, continue our video.